Hi and welcome back to my channel. This is It's a Miracle Beauty and my name is Brandy. I am going to be doing my February favorites. Um, none, I don't know about none, most of these are not new products. They're just products I loved in February and used a lot of. So I'm going to try to go in order of how you would apply them, but it could get messed up along the way. For some reason, there's always like one stray product. So if you like these kinds of videos, I would love if you would subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. And I am working with a brand new camera setup. I did recently get the Canon 80D. And so bear with me as I kind of fine tune and get things the way that I want them. I'm going to do is primers. So one of the primers that I actually put in my pan challenge and wanted to use a lot this year, I wanted to, because I love it, one, it's just a fantastic primer, but also it's older. It's getting expired. It actually should have expired in January. And I just want to make sure that I try to use as much as I can in case it does expire. So I am referring to the Laura Mercier Foundation Primer in Radiance. And this is their old packaging. You can see my last pan line. So this is an actual like like if you can see it, it is a radiant, like almost orangey, shiny. It is not shimmery. It does just do a glow. It is absolutely gorgeous. And I probably used, I think it was at the Laura in the beginning of the year. And that's how much I've used so far. And it's past there now. So the next two are actual sample sizes. I think these are like my 10 samples. And I have another one coming in in one of the boxes this month. So this is the Glam Glow Glow Starter. If I ever get lower on primers, I plan on buying this. This one, I would not recommend for oily skin unless you use it only in certain areas. But for dry skin, this is like a miracle worker. It is shimmery. It is nice. It is, excuse me, not shimmery. It's glowy. It's not shimmery at all. And it just puts a nice healthy glow on your skin. So speaking of healthy glows, I have two products that I would consider are pretty much sister products. I would think that they are... They're very similar. They have the same use, instructions, everything else, but one is a little bit glowier than the other. So I'm referring to the Hollywood Flawless Filter by Charlotte Tilbury, and it does look like this. And then I'm referring to the NARS um, Tinted Glow Booster, and it does look like this. So I am in the shade Calvoya in the NARS and two in the Charlotte Tilbury, which is weird because typically I'm like the fairest or almost fairest. So two, I guess is fine, but these are very diverse. So you don't have to have a perfect skin tone for them. They actually just create this nice luminosity underneath your foundation, or I actually wore this and this together to work the other day. I wasn't feeling well. I just used a little bit of more natural looking um, concealer and this, and that's all I wore. And I received a ton of compliments. So that is something that I love. It's an extra layer of moisture when you have dry skin, but also it is just this really glow from within. It kind of reminds me of the hourglass when you use it. It's the same type of concept. So I do have a couple more like under makeup items. One I think is a holy grail for some and others just don't even want to try it, but I actually bought the travel size first. Wanted to try it and it is the Skin Tune Blur by Fursali and it does look like that. So I actually think this works fantastic. I do not use this on my entire face. I use it right around here where I have just a little bit of texture and I love it. This is maybe one more use in it and it will be done. Another one that has a travel or trial size is the Anastasia Eye Primer. It does look like this. This for me is just like the perfect consistency. Let's see if I can get on so that you can see it. So it's just got this like, and it's very, very opaque. It reminds me of the MAC paint pots, except for it's actually a lighter color and it dries down. Like you don't have to use powder with it. So it's really nice. The next thing I have, and I believe this was, sorry, I'm trying to get used to my waiver and I'm not there yet. So my hair's a little wild today. I have the Becca under eye corrector. I believe this was in my February or my January favorites as well. I have, this is my second jar and they do have one for light to medium and medium to dark. This helps eliminate my under eyes when I use it correctly. Sometimes I'm half asleep in the morning and it doesn't work the same effect, but normally it helps to eliminate that issue. So I personally love it. So foundations. I use three foundations more than any other foundation this month. And it's kind of weird because two of them are ones that I normally didn't use because they're newer, but I definitely jumped on the bandwagon. So if you've watched any of my videos about foundation, I love the Candid Foundation from Revlon. They recently came out with a Candid Glow. It does look like this. And I know it's reflecting a lot. This is an ivory. This is not super glowy. 
you can set it down with powder and there'll be zero glow. But what's neat about this is it does dry down enough that you can wear it by itself. When I do my cream days, I love using this as the foundation and I don't even, I almost do kind of like the Scott Barnes, but not the same. I only use it where I need it and then I fill in with other stuff and it just turns out absolutely stunning. The next one is an oldie but goodie for me. This is the Bobbi Brown Skin Wear Weightless Foundation. I had to put this in my pan challenge and it is starting to deepen a little bit. It's not the same color it was when I got it. It um, is not due to expire for, let's see, this one is not on here. I believe it's a 12 month and I should have actually about seven months left, but it does seem to be darkening or oxidizing. This is one that I think oily or dry skin could use. I think that it's for anybody. It's all in how you use it. This one I don't need a ton. A little bit goes a very long way and it lasts for 12 hours every single time. So that's one of my favorites. And then a new one to my collection. I actually just got this in my Ipsy Glam Bag Plus. This is the Wander Nude Illusion Liquid Foundation by Wander Beauty. This is absolutely stunning. This is one, when I first put it on, it looks fine. Nothing to complain about. But then as I use it and as I um, go through the day and my natural moisture and everything kicks in and I am a dry skin person but it seems to like meld everything in and make this look absolutely stunning. I would really predict that I will continue to buy this once this one's gone and this one probably isn't going to last me very long. It's just stunning. So concealers, I only put two in here which is weird for me because I am a concealer addict. I own way too many but two, one of them I'm wearing today and the other one I wore I would say almost the entire month other than my CoverGirl um, and I can't name it, it's the Stripe Lid. I actually love that one. I thought I was going to hate it, and I love it. But um, the one I'm wearing today is the Dose of Colors Meet Your Hue. I actually love this foundation, too. This is a matte foundation that dry skin can wear. I am in the shade 4. This is a very light under eye. This is for brightening, but it, you could do two shades if you wanted to. I typically don't, only because I use my pot from NARS to touch conceal or spot conceal. The other one is a uber, uber, uber <laughs> full coverage, but it works absolutely fantastic every single time. And it is the hourglass. I don't know if this has, it's the vanish, so it's in the vanish line. And this is cream. So this one is honestly it just works really well. It is just a normal doe foot but you need the smallest amount and it wipes out your entire face. <laughs> it really is a high coverage, high, 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 high coverage concealer. Works fantastic every single time and it honestly just looks really smooth and I'm 41, starting to get wrinkles. Nothing is going to take away my great BI 100% but that one helps to smooth it and make it look really good. In fact, that with the Wander looks really good. So next I have powders. They're all a different use. So that's something that I think at 41 a lot of people aren't using powders. But I learned to, to use different powders in different ways and I mix my powders. Sometimes I mix highlighter in my powders. I just kind of try to find my own thing. So the first thing I have is an oldie but goodie. I've been using this I think 18 months now. I actually own three jars. This one is almost gone. This is the Peach Perfect by Too Faced. This one is almost gone. I've already used one in 2019 but I had a friend who hated it. Instead of returning it I purchased it at a discount so I ended up with two extras. So that one is it actually is a mattifying powder. So I don't like it everywhere on my face. Like an example is right here, it gets really dry. My forehead gets dry, my under eye gets dry. But this is fantastic for the outer face. It does blur and make everything look fantastic. To kind of lighten it up and make it more glowy, I did find the Do You by Too Faced at TJ Maxx. I believe I paid $9.99 for this. It's one of my purchases that broke my no buy in February. And it's just, you mix it in and it's it's too much radiance by itself, but with the other powders. In fact, it looks great with Laura Mercier as well. So it just looks absolutely gorgeous. Then we have the Bare Minerals. This is the Fairly Medium 05. So this one I actually use differently. Once in a while I use it as a full foundation, but typically I use it on my nose where my foundation tends to break up and I'll go through my under eye. This actually has luminosity to it, so it creates a great glow. And then sometimes, because I do work two jobs, so I do my makeup at five, six in the morning, and then I go to work again after four, I get off one and go to my second retail job. And I will use this to touch up and it just re smooths all my foundation out and it looks absolutely gorgeous. I never knew Bare Minerals had luminosity to it. I never realized that it had anything out that was just a powder. I never tried it. I decided to try it after working at my retail job and seeing how many people bought it that it just was gorgeous. So I actually have two shades. I have Fairly Medium 05 and I have I think it's called Fairly Light and it's 03. That one's a little bit yellow for me so I do typically mix the two. So what else do we have here? 
I actually only put one bronzer and one blush in this. One of them is a bronzer that I did just move into my pan challenge. And this is the Pure Bronzing Act. And this is in light. So this one looks like it would be nothing. Like it literally looks like there is nothing there. It goes on so light and so easy, but it's completely buildable and smells like chocolate. That's always a perk. The only blush I put in here, and it isn't the only blush I used or liked this month, but it was one that I reached for the most. It is definitely one that I did more with this one than anything else. And this is actually, I think, no longer sold. I could be mistaken, but this is the L'Oreal Paradise Enchanted Blush. So it does look like that. This is in fantastical. So this is like a peachy pink blush. I'm actually wearing it today with a combination of other stuff and it just looks really good every single time with no makeup days I can wear. I mean just everything it looks good. Um, two mascara items. One is a trial. I actually got two trial sizes from Sephora and I actually plan to purchase it. I think it looks really good and that is the It Cosmetics Lash Blowout. So the brush looks like this which is like my favorite kind of brush. So bear with me if it's not focusing. This is a new camera, so I'm still trying to learn the autofocus because it has a really good one, but I have to learn it. Um, this one just really deepens your lashes. I have blonder lashes. This makes them look dark, black, and separated. I mean, it just really pops them out, and I love it. And then I have, this is another oldie but goodie. This is the Voluminous Primer by L'Oreal. I have actually tried this year, in 2020, I've had Tarte, and I had one other one. Oh, the Essence. And this one just does the job. Like, it literally just really helps my lashes have more volume. Eyeshadows. I have two. Both were brand new to me in February when my husband bought and one was a no buy that I broke. So I'm referring to the e.l.f. Bite Size and this is in the, the Hot Jalapeno. This one is just such a pretty palette. I've actually used it quite a few times and you can't even see all the use because you need so little because they are so pigmented. So this is one that if you have, have an ability to go touch, feel, and experiment with, they're $3. Three. And it's they work fantastic. One that is, again, an older product but newer to me. And this was the Huda Beauty Amethyst Palette. It does look like this. It is just stunning. Funny thing, though, is... I used the purples in this and it looked like I had a hot pink, very similar today. This is the Shane Dawson palette with Jeffree Star, but it looked very similar to this and it was from a purple palette. So it's kind of interesting. And they do have pinks in it, but not that many. So my eyeliners, I don't think it changed this much. I think at least two out of the three are from last month. One is the Sigma Longwear Pencil. This is a turn up and I actually sharpened the tip when I didn't realize it was a turn up like blonde moment USA. But this does my waterline or if I want to do like I'm talking about my upper waterline or if I want to use it for my upper lid. It looks fantastic every single time and does not smudge. And then my two favorite, I wear color under my waterline almost every day. And it's the Urban Decay in Chaos and Junkie. These are a green and a blue. And I will swatch them for you. It's almost the blue or the green is almost a turquoise, but not quite. They do look like this. So the green is on the outside and the blue is on the inside. So those are gorgeous. I only have two lips as well. One I'm wearing today. In fact, I could put some more on. This is Maybelline's Baddest Beige. This actually was one that Jaclyn Hill told, you know, the world about. And it actually was out of stock for a while. So I did end up getting it. And I don't like it by itself. It's very pale, pinky, pastel. Definitely not even a beige family to me. However, with the right lip liner, this can just be stunning. And the formula is like 10 stars. I mean, it is the best. So I love that one. And then another one, I actually own quite a few of these in, in color and in clear. And this is Floss. This is the ATH, and this is a colored lip gloss. These ones remind me quite a bit of the Fenty. They have just the right amount of stick to stick around, but just the right amount of slip to not make your lips feel like they're sticking together, and it doesn't have a disgusting flavor. So it's actually a pretty awesome lip gloss. I keep the, the clear one. I have one in my work bag and one in my car that just, even when I'm wearing no makeup, I just put them on to help my lips stay moisturized, and they work really well. I know absolutely nothing about the brand. I keep getting them in boxes and not complaining. So that is my February 2020 favorites. And if you have a favorite or one of these were your favorite, will you comment down below? And if you like unboxings, favorites, pan challenges, stuff like that, as well as 
um, some get ready with me's. I hope that you will subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. And if you like this video, will you please hit like? It is something that really helps all of us in the YouTube algorithm if you can click like when you like a video because it will one suggest it to the people that you follow and that follow you. And then it will also help the algorithm see what people like and move them up in the counts. I hope that you have a fantastic day and I hope I see you again soon.